Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to use the manicurist green, green, green flash, not a green flash, flash, but green flash. Oh my God. And this is Dazzle Dry. Looks really good still. But I really wanted to try the other product. So we're going to redo it today. First, I'm going to remove this product. And this is just pure acetone and I press down on the nail or on the polish and this sticks to the nail. So it sticks to the polish. I usually do both feet and I leave this on for a minute. Sometimes when they, these things are split to two flakes, they actually attach a little bit better. Now I'm gonna press it down and pull towards me. And everything comes off really nice and clean. It's important not to rub it into the skin now. I don't do a lot of, um, actually I don't gel polish or semi-permanent on the feet anymore because I have Dazzle Dry, so this is a very good um, solution. But when I do, I do the toes first and then I do the rest of the pedicure. And I do the pedicure dry as usual. At this point, you could put the, um, like a callus remover or a softener on the bottoms of the feet. Especially the one that, so you can leave it on for, for a long amount of time, use this one. Some other ones, the alkaline ones, they have to be rinsed off after so many minutes. So the other one is kind of safer that way. So there's no time limit. All right. So I'm going to explain my steps. I like using a, um, a napkin because then I can just throw away everything. When I cut the nail, I cover the, the nail so it doesn't fly all over the place. These clippers are amazing. I really like the angle. But I guess this one is good for when you're cutting someone else's nails. For yourself, I'm not sure if this is comfortable. I like them because they are quite small and they fit really well in my hand so I can be very very precise so I can be closer to the nail.
shape the needle across, straight across. It's very interesting. Um, a lot of podiatrists always say that you should be cutting the needles straight across. But then every time I send my clients for whatever reasons to a podiatrist or podologist or chiropodist, they come back, especially well when it comes to ingrown toenails, with the nails that are really cut into the sides. So it's a little confusing. I mean, sometimes cutting a little bit rounder is necessary because some people's shape, their uh, nail shape kind of dictates, uh, their natural shape dictates how you cut it. You can't always cut it all the way across because it would have like a huge corners um, that would be like flapping in the air. Because generally I try not to like really go in and cut into the, uh, the sides. And again, another thing, um, I sent a client, I can't remember what it was, for calluses or something. So she came back from the podiatrist and her nails as well were cut that way and cut really, really, really short, all of them. So again, it's kind of a mixed messages. the toenails in short sections as you can see making sure I don't catch the skin underneath the hyponychium because that can be very painful and it can definitely bleed so we don't want that so when I know that someone has a very very high hyponychium I cut it almost like in a, in a triangle and then I just file by hand to make sure I don't I don't do that I don't cut someone by accident When doing a dry pedicures, it is very important to have a proper suction. So you want to make sure that you're not breathing in all the dust. So I have the Salon Air for the pedicures and Nova Flare for the manicures. Both excellent. This was such a good buy. Both of the companies are great. 
So now I'm pushing back the proximonial fold. I don't worry about the cuticle, but because the cuticle I'm going to remove with e-file. So the living skin now is pushed back and here we have the cuticle, which we're leaving behind. And I'm using Erica. And this is tapered barrel in medium. I like the fact that it's slightly, because they have a skyver, which is very, very popular as well, but the skyver has like a rounded edge. And I find, obviously, if you use this bit um, at a right angle because if you go like this you're going to fall into the nail so you want to make sure that you are flush with the nail but when you are you can really get that that groove nice and clean and I do a lot with this bit I clean up the skin the hardened skin around the nail I bevel the edge. And when the nails are dry, you can really see what you're doing. By the way, I cleaned the feet first. I use an alcohol solution to really spray the skin, um, spray between the toes. It works very well. pedicure bit, the skin pedicure bit I think it's called, for the bottoms. And I use a cone sometimes actually too, to get into the, the corners. The cone I use it on forward on this side. Then you can really nicely clean these little corners. There you go. And then this side on reverse.
sometimes there is quite a lot of um, like a dead skin that accumulates underneath and it bothers the client and a lot of times people think that they have ingrown toenail but it's really not ingrown you can see this little corner I'm going to soften it this one is good I do this part without too much pressure because I want to catch just the living skin and expose the cuticle because if I push too hard then I'm going to push all that dead skin, all that cuticle underneath the proximal nail foot and I don't want to do that because I want to remove the cuticle. I don't want to push it underneath the proximal nail foot. As you can see, it's interesting because there is tiny amount of red staining from the nail polish, but it's not yellow. And you know how usually we're told that the yellowing is caused by pigments, especially in the red nail polish? I don't think that's the case because Dazzle Dry also has red pigments and some of them can stain a little bit, but then it stains red. It doesn't stain yellow. I do understand that usually it's the yellow pigments and the red pigments is, um, that, are, that stain the most. Blue as well, but that's another story. But I really, there is absolutely no yellowing when it comes to Dazzle Dry. And there's also absolutely no yellowing when it comes to gel polish, shellac. So that's very interesting. And I do understand that shellac has a base coat, but um, a lot of people, even when they're using base coat, they still get the yellowing. In fact, I got yellowing just from the base coat because I've been wearing just the base coat to see um, why my nails are yellowing on my toes. So I wore base coat for like three months. On one side, on one foot and the foot that had the base coat regular base coat not dazzle dry it went a little yellow actually significantly more yellow and the one with dazzle dry also I did base coat and top coat it did not whatsoever turn yellow so that's interesting have to test this a little further because that fascinates me. 
and let me know what your experiences are with yellowing. And I know if, you know, yellowing is just a cosmetic issue, really, although there was some surface damage from even wearing regular polish. But, so if you are always wearing polish, who cares, right? But the problem is, if you want to stop wearing nail polish, or if you like very light sheer colors, or if you like to wear just a clear, then you can't because your nails are really, really yellow and it doesn't look pretty. And that's, I'm in that situation where I very often wear just a clear because I just like that look. That's why any type of yellowing really bothers me. I'm doing this very, very gently just so I don't shove the uh, the bit under the, under the nail. This is 99% alcohol, clean brush.
Okay, so let's bend the knee now. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do it this way. Okay, this might work. Okay, so this is a different different positioning because normally I have clients with their feet straight out, kind of facing down a little bit because uh, I prefer that position, but in order for us to use the lamp, the, the feet have to be more straight. So this is the base coat. I'm going to start with this small pinky toenail. Because the nails are so small, I can probably cover two of them with one brush load. This brand really feels like nail polish. So you kind of have to adjust your technique if you're used to a gel polish. The brushes are nice on some of the colors or some of the products, not on all of them. I'm actually going to ask them if they could send me more brushes. So I'm going to probably just film one foot. Mm -hmm. more straight and then we'll see if this can work. Mm -hmm. can't definitely go over the same area more than once really because it, it starts to pull. It's weird. A little bit different. It's more like nail polish. And this is the top coat.
feels dry. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do the heels. And that's it. Looks pretty good. I have to say, it just takes some getting used to when it comes to the application. Maybe this type of color is a little bit more difficult to apply. The other ones that I worked with, just mind you on my hands, were a little bit easier to use. So we'll see. I'll give you an update as soon as I know a little bit more. <laughs>